Okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and share with you. And uh, I want to start into Luke chapter 21. And the title for this is How We Can Give Jesus Rest. I think that's an interesting title because most of us are seeking to uh, get rest and enter into rest. And that's where a lot of our focus is. And uh, so we're going to depart from that usual theme of uh, it being about us. And we're going to look at it from Jesus' perspective um, in this sharing today. So in Luke 21, uh, just verse 37 and 38, And in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, and at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. And so we have here a, um, a scripture that can be read several different ways. One is we can see that the people are hungry and they're seeking the Lord and they're seeking the word and they really want him. Um, and the question kind of arises, and I don't really know the best way to explain it, but the question kind of arises to me, uh, is, our, is our seeking of Jesus, is it about Him or is it about the Word or whatever we can get from Him? And there really is a difference. There's a, there's a big difference because that difference has to do with where our heart is at the time. And in this case, there's an obvious seeking of Him, that they are wanting to hear Him. They're wanting the Word of God from His heart and from His mouth. And so it says, the, uh, the last uh, part of verse 38, um, they've come to Him in the temple to hear Him. But a lot of times people miss the other part of this verse, and that is that in the daytime He was teaching, in the daytime, he was teaching, and he's teaching in the temple. Um, and at night, he went out and abode in the mount that is called Mount of Olives. And all the people came in the next morning. So that means that every, once everybody got fed the day before, they all went home. They all went to their houses. They forgot about Jesus. So Jesus just went to the Mount of Olives, and there he's, he was alone, and he spent time with the Lord, but he was, the point was that he was alone. Nobody thought to take him in. And, um, you know, there, there can be a spirit where we're seeking Jesus, all right, but we're seeking Jesus for ourselves. And we don't really take into consideration him, him. I hope that makes sense. We don't take into consideration him, him. We take into consideration him that we're trying to learn, that we're trying to get, that we're trying to understand. Um, and a lot of times that has to do with with getting, you know, and not giving to him. Really not even a lot of thought sometimes about giving back to him. Um, but... Um, Let's turn over just a few chapters to chapter 24 now, Luke 24, and I want to give you an example uh, from which we can draw a giving that is for him. And we saw in uh, that the last chapter, in chapter 21, that there was that there was no place for him to rest, and so he had to find his own place. But in Luke 24, first let's just look at verse 28 and 29. And let's see if I got the right place. And they drew near unto the village to which they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. And they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening. And the day is far spent, and he went in to tarry with them. And so, a uh, couple of things that you can see right off. One is that they, they had reached their journey's end. They arrived at the village to which they went. That's what the scripture says. So they're 
there, you know, it, the night, it also says the night was far spent, so it was late. <clears throat> In their mind, Jesus was going further. Jesus was, his journey was taking him further. Um, they were at a place that was home, that was familiar, and they were going to, they were going to rest, and they were going to eat, and they were going to be taken care of. Um, but they turn to Jesus, and they say to him, Abide with us. I say, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. I think a lot of times, I, I kind of saw this in light of a prayer, our prayer request, when we're on a journey, and it's dark, and it's long, and we're hungry, and we're tired. And we don't like the darkness. And so that's when we want Jesus to abide with us. A lot of times that abiding is because of our fears. That, that abiding is because we, we want Jesus and we're afraid. Or we, we need Jesus in this dark situation. Or, or you know, we're spent and uh, we need the Lord. But these guys had come to their place of rest. And they were saying to Jesus... Come, abide with us. Come, be with us. And and I I kind of took it as a prayer request. That and the reason why I did is for the very reason I just said is because when we're in that place, we cry out to Jesus and we say, "Oh, we Jesus, Jesus, be with us." But I don't believe, and of course the scriptures bear it out. That's not why they asked that. They were thinking about him. They were thinking about his journey. They were thinking about that he might be weary. They were thinking about he might be hungry. They were thinking that the night is far spent. It's already gone late and uh, to take care of him. And so um, I, I just sort of listed a couple of things that came to my mind on that front, that, there, that this was like a prayer request for Jesus' benefit, that it was... It was a thought that went beyond getting something from Jesus. Um, and they thought about his need, which, because we know Jesus is God, we assume, well, there are no needs because God has no needs, but he does. He has desires and he has things that please his heart. And, um, and in this long journey, they, they're basically saying, come rest, come be with us but not for our benefit, but for your benefit. And um, I thought of it in terms of them being a shelter and a rest for him. If for no other reason, then they, th they thought of him. If for no other reason, then, then that was what was important. And what came to my mind is throughout the scriptures many times it says, and doing this for Jesus' sake, or for Christ's sake. And it uses it a, a fair amount of times. And a lot of times we do it for God. We say, well, I'm doing this for Jesus. But are we doing it for His sake? I don't know if I can even make the contrast there clear. Because one is going through the motions of something, uh, or maybe even carrying on the ministry faithfully. Not necessarily going through the motions. And the other one is thinking of his sake. I'm doing this for his sake, not mine, not the ministries. Uh, just these just these things, these things going on. And then in verse uh, 32, and they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked, uh, while he talked with us along the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? Did not our hearts burn within us? And, and what I thought about was the fact that on that journey, Jesus was pouring out. From the minute he joined them to the end, he was pouring the word into them. Which remember the other scripture they came to hear, they came to hear him teach. Okay, same exact situation. They're coming to hear him teach, and so these guys are 
are hearing him teach and sharing the word, and it's affecting them. And and um, um, but he's pouring out, and they're taking in. And at the end of the journey, they they say, "Didn't our hearts burn within us?" I mean, the effect of his word touched them and yet they thought about him in the end. They thought, you know, this was a long journey for us, but you're going further and so come abide with us and take rest and take food and and that sort of thing. Um, and maybe they thought about Jesus, maybe they thought about Jesus um, being alone out in the dark. Yeah, he's not afraid of the dark, but he needs to come in with us. He needs to be taken care of. Um, and so, um, so I've been given the thing that I got ten more minutes, but I am going to give you my little list of some of the things that I felt, because remember the title of this was How We Can Give Jesus Rest. So now I just want to close with how I would give Jesus rest. How would I give Jesus rest? <clears throat> the first thing I would do is ask for nothing. If I, if I was going to give Jesus rest, I wouldn't ask anything for myself. I would make my wants and my needs and my problems at that time, if I'm going to seek to give him rest, I wouldn't bring up any of my stuff. He hears that all the time. As has been said many times, come boldly to the throne of grace so we all just come boldly there, get what we need and leave. Um, uh, so I would completely, I, I would become as self-forgetting as I possibly could. And if it's just me and him and me trying to give him rest, then the only important thing in the room is him. Um, the second thing is that I would speak from my heart into his heart. I know that we all pray and um, I know that he hears all of our prayers. And I know that he's, he's so faithful. Uh, but what if prayers were really never meant to be religious in nature? What if they were just meant to be us talking to God? And more specifically, talking from my heart into his heart. Um, I saw a little article that, that said something about, it was something entitled like this, five things that you, you can ask your father that will make his day on Father's Day. And basically they were either doing something special for him or talking from the, the child's heart, whether it's young or old or whatever. And... Uh, I thought, you know, a lot of times we don't really just tell him our heart. And I'm not talking about our fears. <laughs> we, tell him, we tell him those. God knows he gets a lot of that. But I'm talking about the things that we care about or the things that, you know, just even ask him, what is it you really care about? And Lord, I know you may not be able to communicate that to me right now, but your spirit is is in me and on me and and have him break through my world centered, my Randy world, my earth world, my Kelly world, my Debbie world, my the world of my the realm of my existence. Um, and then uh, remember this is uh, how would I bring him rest or what would I do to try to bring about rest for the Lord um, I would tell him that I'm with him 
I would try to communicate that, not just by those words, but that, Lord, I am with you. And, you know, and, you know, we almost always have to add in, you know, even though I don't seem like it, or maybe at times I'm not, <laughs> I want you to know that in my core, I am with you. I love you. I am with you. I want you. And I want what you want. Okay. So remember now, this is, this is as if we're talking to the Lord, trying to give him rest. And we're taking all the burdens off. We're taking all of the earthly problems because, you know, he's eternal. And, you know, we, we only think in the realm of the earth. He doesn't think in the realm of the earth except for our sakes. But when we move into his realm, there are new, new questions and new realities to come to, to be enlightened to, to be brought into. Um, I wrote down this statement. I would say, my heart beats with yours. Now, I know that saying stuff really doesn't count if we, if we live contrary to those things. Uh, but I think even, even if we were totally not that way and we told him that, it would mean more than if we never said anything. Um, and, you know, it occurs to me, even while I'm talking right here, these are things we can tell the Father, too, on Father's Day, our Heavenly Father, on Father's Day. Um, but can you imagine the joy of the Lord, uh, instead of being my strength, just it being Him joyful, Him, just us making Him full of joy, just to hear us say that uh, my heart beats with yours, or I want my heart to beat with yours. Uh, we start straying a little bit when we start make my heart beat with yours, because then it's about us again. I hope, I hope you can see the difference there. And, um, and then the thought of how would I bring him rest I just jotted down this sentence. I would give what little strength the weak can offer to the great. I would give what little strength the weak can offer to the great. I mean, he's the great. And so we assume because he's the great that, you know, well, we're the weak, so this has to be this kind of relationship, you know, that, but can't the weak sometimes think, is there anything that this weak vessel can give to the great that would bless him? That would bless you, Lord. I would give what little strength the weak can offer to the great. And when I said strength, that, that's whatever. You know, I put the word strength because I was thinking in terms of rest. Uh, what I can do to lift the load. What I can do to cover him. What I can do to say, hey, you know, abide with me. And I'm going to be a shelter for you. You know, abide with me. That's what they said. Abide with us. We will be a shelter for you. We will cover you. We will rest you. We will allow you rest instead of allowing you, like the, the first scriptures we read in chapter 1, instead of getting the word, gathering it up, everybody go to their houses, Jesus is left alone at the Mount of Olives, and he spends the night there. Um, and then the last thing 
uh, how I would give him rest. is that I would love him. I would just, I didn't say I would tell him I love him. That's fine. There's no problem there. Sure, that's good. But I would love him. I would just love him. And I believe that if I just loved him. But that would do more than all the teaching. Because you see, if in chapter 21, if the first goal was that they just loved him, the first goal was that they would have taken him with him. Come abide with us instead of leaving him out in the night, in the cold, to find the Mount of Olives for him to just... Because it didn't say he went there to be with the Lord or to pray. It just says that's where he spent the night. If we love his teaching, we may listen to him and then leave and not even notice that he didn't go home with anybody. You understand. I hope you understand how I'm putting this. But if you, if you just love him, you notice that. You go, Jesus, nobody invited you home. Come with me. And that's, I mean, God is love. That's, that would be a wonder to him, to be loved back. To be loved back. Even if it was not as pure as his love, because none of, none of ours is. And so... Um, I don't know how much time I got left, but basically, am I done with that section before I pray? Okay, so I will just, I will just pray. Father, I, Lord, these are heart issues, Father, and I don't know how to verbalize heart issues, but I just in this session was seeking, Father, to, to move the pendulum from off of us to Jesus, to draw out our hearts because we do love him to break open our heart as a as a as a vessel of ointment as a alabaster box And just pour it on him. So, um, we ask you, Holy Spirit, and we ask you, Father, to help us to, to exhibit the things that are important. To find Jesus in ways beyond teaching And to love him. And to love him. So we thank you, Father. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for giving us Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us Jesus. In Jesus' name.